How's it going everyone? I hope you're having a kick-ass week. I'm uh, up early before work and honest, uh, a little bit nervous because the guys at the Whiskey Vault have, uh, have sampled, have reviewed some of my whiskey. Uh, I'm here. I was smart enough at the time to save some of those products uh, exactly as they were when I put them in the box then. So while they have been continuing to age on wood and glass, so on and so forth, um, I took some of those products off and uh, halted their growth as it were. Anyway guys, I haven't seen this video yet, I haven't seen anything um, from the guys, I haven't been given any feedback about what they thought, uh, so I thought it might be kind of funny to record my impression, record my reactions to what they say. Anyway, let's get stuck in. So what are we doing right now? We're Don't. doing still it, still it, Jesse from New Zealand. Sit this magnificent bastard. This has been like six months in the making. He well, that's the cue. <laughs> yeah, he, he made these whiskeys that he sent us. Mm -hmm. We had not tried them. New Zealand. Okay, so it's kind of funny because I attempted to send the stuff to them and got caught up in customs and had to do it again. It took a whole whole. A lot of time to get it there and then when it finally did get it there these guys were in the middle of trying to launch their distillery and everything so it all it all went pear-shaped but um we got there in the end <laughs> he well that's the cue man yeah he, he made these whiskeys that he sent us mm -hmm. we had not tried them new zealand where it's legal to do home distilling and we've known still it a long time it's that is one of the earliest uh followers on the vault yeah. episodes He's, he has a channel about um home distilling which in new zealand it's not illegal in the states just like still illegal just yeah just i'm not saying anything i'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> all right so you want to you ready for this yeah oh we got a Alright, so uh, yeah, the guys are right. Here in New Zealand, it's totally legal. In America, not so much. That is one of the things that um, that hurts me. It'd be awesome if the guys over there could join in on the craft. And uh, one day, I really hope to see that change. But um, at the moment, it, it is what it is. So just in case you're getting any ideas, team, um, it is not a bad idea to check out the legalities of distilling in, in your area before you jump in. <laughs> I have heard a legend oh. of two companions that yeah. sample the water of life immune to the effects of fuckery and pretension. <laughs> There's a lot. Whose lack of snobbery is bested only by their knowledge of and love of shenanigans and whiskey. Tell me, have I found the fabled pair that will evaluate my whiskey honestly and fairly? Yeah, look, man. Two lines. Right, Wait for it. Right, two lines. Right. Okay, now that Rex's ego has been stroked a little, <laughs> it would really be an honor if you guys would give an honest opinion on the spirits. I'm not looking for back rubs. Oh. I'm looking for a calibration of my attempts to assess my own product and assist in chasing the craft. Good, because as much as I, you know, get to know people in relationships, like still it's been with the strawberries and nice guy. Hell, still it's a mod in our Whiskey Tribe Reddit. Mm -hmm. The subreddit for Whiskey Tribe. Yeah, he's Red one of our people. Yeah, reddit.com. So we are not gonna pull any punches. Jesse. No, no, no. Like, <laughs> yeah, so I told these guys, uh, you don't need to be nice. I, I, I just want you to, to, to give me a, uh, a fair assessment of my stuff. And the idea is that I want to use that as a, a calibration of how I'm tasting the whiskey so I know whether I'm being, you know, too kind to my own product and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, and, and let's face it, guys, that's what these guys do. They do wellness. They, they, they shoot straight. Uh, so while I may have to take my medicine, I'm cool with that, and at least I can improve from um, uh, there on in. On that note, though, guys, uh, obviously this is this is spirits that have been aging for like six months. Um, the bastard whiskey, which is one of the whiskeys I sent, was literally the first spirit that I've ever made. <laughs> so um, it's pretty nerve-wracking sending that into them, but um, yeah. Anyway. Let, let, let's see what we get to. Uh, just on a, just a quick note though, team, I did put a poll up on YouTube saying sort of basically what do you guys think these guys are going to say about my stuff? Uh, and the result of that poll was pretty much, eh, it tastes kind of like whiskey that's a bit young. Um, that's what people sort of thought that these guys would say about my stuff. Uh, and that's hopefully, that, that's what I'm hoping they will say. That, that's where I'm hoping this will end. But um, let's see.
If you need a little challenge in your day, right. taste everything before opening the envelope to find out what the bottles are. Okay. That's why I have them lined up, sure, right? Sure, yeah. uh, if you accept the challenge, it's probably worth pouring two flights, one with the B bottles yeah. and one with the S bottles. Okay. P.S. All samples are between 40% and 60%. Yes. Some are fairly mellow. A few may try to wear your skin. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Thank you for saying this, still because yeah. uh, as much as I like you, I'm going to give the honest opinions here. Yeah, okay, we're going to start. My understanding, <laughs> as you pour, mm -hmm. right? My understanding is still it hasn't been doing this for years and years and years. Nope. So I'm thinking, my assumption is I'm going to go into this and there's just going to be like a lot of young New stuff. <laughs> You're so nervous. So nervous. Uh, I'm all nervous. Sorry, nervous There's gonna be like, like a lot of young whiskey stuff going on. A lot of We're gonna find out. We're gonna start with B. That is B one. This is this is known as new make and then B two. Good. Got a little bit of a little bit of color. B three. A little darker. A little bit more color. And B four. That looks like it's lighter actually. It looks uh, actually it looks filtered. Okay. But it just could be higher proof. Okay. Oh, this is nice. That is. It doesn't taste like it's a high proof. Okay. <laughs> I thought the new mech spirit was the one that was going to get really shredded. Um, but okay. I'll take, oh, this is nice. <laughs> proof. It's actually rounded off and pretty chill. Sweet. It's got a really interesting note that's from beginning to end. It's like a, a fruity, almost a nutty, mostly fruity. Oh yeah. Right, anyway guys, uh, before we get too much stuck in, let me pour, what was that? That's the uh, the new make spirit. So here we go team. Now like I said, I do have to get to work. <laughs> I'm up early, <laughs> I've got a little time to recover, but I do have to get to work. So I'm gonna be doing a whole lot of smelling uh, and very little tasting, but uh, I do want to be able to taste what they're talking about at the same time as they're talking about it, so I can, you know, p pick up on the same things. Wait, there's something there though. Very, very clingy. It's still with me. On the back end of this, there's this uh, heavy oil roundness mm -hmm. that turns into a certain flavor. What is this? That's flavor? right on the back of my mind, and I can't pinpoint this is it. It's almost menthol. I wonder if it's something like that they're going for. I don't know. Let's see. This is, is it like a pomegranate? I've never had a pomegranate. Oh, I've never had a pomegranate. No, What's um, wrong? More it's sweet, fruity stuff, maybe. But it is. Is this in a sweet, fruity. Is this an. This mm. could be an infusion. Is this an infusion? Because no. there is a note in here that is very fruity. Yeah, I gotta figure out what, what they're the after. Fruit it is. But it's a mm. uh, very distinct. Not typical whiskey fruitiness. Yeah, there's a sweet, sort of full bodied, fruity flavor. Hmm. Um, pear like almost, something like that. I've never really thought a whole lot about that flavor being in there, so that already I'm getting gold out of this. That's in that. No, and it's it is melon like in me its fruitness. Okay, I would say. Melon's getting there. The closest I'm thinking is like a pomegranate honeydew. Honeydew is what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Honeydew melon. But it's got these more clingy, it's like honeydew melon with black licorice. You know what that's not? Mm, mm, licorice. Sure, yeah, I can see that. It's really not. Yeah. It's pretty damn smooth. I like that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it starts, now I'm just going to give the journey of the, no, wait. <laughs> so who's going to give the last say? Hey, the journey of the taste more. is, oh. <laughs> I know what it is. Oh. It's reminding me of that rounded sugar note you get when your sugary cereal is left behind in the milk. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. And you're done with the cereal now because there's no crunch texture. Yeah. And so you drink the milk and the milk has this round, clingy feeling. They made the sugar a little bit safer. But there's this slightly melony sugar yeah. note in the middle of it. I Is there a nuttiness that jumps I, out in the I first guess? few seconds? <laughs> Not hmm, really for me, but both, the thing is what times. happens in the second half of this overcomes whatever started Almost a walnut not quite a walnut. Okay, we're gonna move to the in next the one. first couple of seconds And then it goes into like the oh, one. I like the nose on this the melon vibe uh, 
be. Alright, so I'm going to pop um, all the stuff I don't drink into my infinity bottle. Actually, actually, what I should probably do is save some of each of these bottles until they unless they circle back around to them. Because I'm not awesome like them and I don't have a whole lot of Glen cans. <laughs> anyway, let me pour D2. Oh, it's the same thing. They just aged it a little bit? It's just got a little bit of caramel added. So it hasn't made any dramatic changes. The nose is significantly better. Yeah, a little caramel. Mm. Nose is totally different. Okay, so I'm gonna let you guys in on a little uh, secret here. These four drinks are exactly the same New Make Spirit. They've just been, slightly different things have happened to them. Um, and I wanted to do that to sort of, A, uh, see where my things are at different stages. I've also tried something a little bit crazy and I've thrown them a curveball here. Uh, which should be kind of interesting to see how they react to it. But anyway, let's carry on. And better, but the taste is 80% the same with a little caramel added. I say they just aged it a little bit because I'm so used to talking about distilleries. Yeah, I'm so used to talking about yeah. distilleries. My, yeah. my Jesse extensive and all of team. His staff. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, I think he had like a kid recently. Yeah, like, a year, like a year ago or something. So, so recently. Yeah. <laughs> the kid probably just graduated. That's, uh, <laughs> that was oh, a twin like and this is going. about five months old. <laughs> this gets better on the nose. Every time the nose just gets more rich and vibrant. I, it's still slightly shiny, but it's... Yeah. I do like what that. you're still on. You're going to the third, I'm still on the second. I do like what that little bit of age did to this, but... Oh, it's back! Okay. That weird melon, you know, that was just eh, was clinging oh. to the end of everything. This is starting to get towards... It whiskey. got... It went away. This is starting to get towards whiskey whiskey. Yeah. And this is... <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is going to be really interesting to see what they say about this one, guys. Um, I don't want to ruin the surprise too much on this one, but let's see. That's my favorite one so far. That one is... Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough, um, Rick. Well, what uh, is Daniel. that? That's just a bourbon it's or a young something. bourbon, man. I don't even know a if it's young. young it's just bourbon. No, no, no. See, what, what I'm equating to young is it's not deep heavy rich notes yeah so you're definitely getting some if it's cherry, a bourbon flavor it stayed out of the barrel long enough that there's not a lot of barrel charred right. or barrel spice wood notes this is more just rich caramel all of the all of these went away mm, yeah no those are gone so or no is this a progression of the I'm, same thing i'm assuming all right, we'll see. but if it is it's that's a massive change different animal different animal yeah i could drink that all day that's a great one well it's more just like classic bourbon. Uh, yes, it's it's more like classic bourbon, and I would think on the range of I can't uh, wait to see the reaction on the spectrum of bourbon. We'll see. I would see these kinds of flavors coming out of like a twenty to thirty dollar bourbon. Something yeah, I would classic. say twenty thirty. It's yeah, not gonna be like, it's not gonna be super maybe aged. forty if the proof is high enough. But it would be based on proof. Would be based on okay. John, that's classic. I've never had a craft of the story make. Yeah, something that that's just that simply bourbon. Yeah, it's very straight. <laughs> Because it didn't make it. Bourbon. This one, the <laughs> butter scotch, like the sweet oak. This one. now is back to reminding me of this one, a little bit. Okay, guys. So I snuck a commercial bourbon in there, just to basically to mess with them, to have a little fun with them, um, but also to prove to myself, and I guess to to them and to everyone else that they actually know what they're talking about, and obviously they do. They've they've called it pretty they've called it pretty uh, pretty tight to what's true so far. Um, one of my favorite brewers in the world, uh, beer brewers, said that the best thing that anyone ever did to him was take his beer, put it into a bottle, give it back to him, uh, and tell them that it was their beer, and to give him and to give them um, a critique of it. And what it did was it completely removed himself from his own product, let him assess it honestly and openly without all that other baggage. Um, and the fact that he landed fairly closely on the assessment sort of proved to himself that he wasn't just entirely full of shit. So anyway, I, I thought it'd be interesting to serve these guys something kind of similar to that and just sort of see how they handled it. And, um, and they've nailed it. This last drink uh, is the same stuff, but there's a fair bit of... Uh, there is some fuckery going on with this one, so I'm going to see what they say. 
Did you pour these in order? Mm-hmm. Yeah? All right. Because after the first two... Yeah. This is the that. <laughs> it's got that... You called it. ...round, Whoa. but now... That ending round thing is pure Dude, hard candy. The nose on this though. Yeah, it's pure hard candy. This is no, this is Werther's original. Yeah. Pure hard candy. Is that a hard candy? Yeah. yeah okay. It's a hard candy. I like the caramel, mm -hmm. but also like this butteriness to it. Yeah, try it. It's that is almost tastes like a flavored you whiskey. Say, you say like it's jumping back to these? Yeah, no. it's yeah, it's <laughs> got all that weird ending round note, but it turns it's the into same candy stuff, instead of just sweet milk. It's that, back. That that no, live is back. No, no, no. Yeah. No, we're not back to one and two. Mm hmm Not back to one and two. Yeah, we... First we two, verse two, very similar. You. I'm going to bet on it. <laughs> I'm going to bet this is just an older one of these. How does melon turn into, like, just butter and caramel? Because all and... of the butterscotch notes dominated, but you kept the round... All right, let's... Let's pour a little bit of that stuff. Uh, the fourth one that they're talking about. And see... If it's how I remember it, basically. Yeah, so the coffee's gone. It's not big anymore, which is good. I didn't want it to be a... Uh, oh, I let the cat out of the bag there, didn't I? But that's okay. I didn't want the coffee to be a flavor. I just wanted it to sort of add to the complexity. Um, so essentially, this is exactly the same age as the other two whiskeys of mine on the table there. Uh, I've just tried to... Bump up the complexity and give it sort of the impression of age by messing with it a little bit. And feeling. I'm, I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna look. <laughs> all right. Well, can we look? This is we did all the bees. Is that? Can we look now? Oh, it's flavored. That's why. Mm. It's the same thing, but with flavor. I told you, it's these, but with a little fl that stuff steeped in it. What's what's the flavor? This is reminding me of TX blended a little. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, oh, the vanilla and coffee beans. The T S Y. Yeah, I wouldn't get the coffee beans, but I am getting the vanilla. <laughs> the vanilla of the almost, almost. Yeah. You're saying dessert, almost like an ice cream. A vanilla yeah. Oh ice yeah, cream. yeah. So no, the first I one, whenever we say flavored, what is, how how does flavoring actually get into a whiskey? Is it a vial of extract? Well, no, no. You can flavor it. But that's not what he's doing. He's okay. just steeping these things in the spirit, like yep, a tea that's bag. That's exactly what I'm just doing, my man. Leaving it in there. So putting like a vanilla tea in, like. What is the actual vanilla actions? and coffee beans? Straight up vanilla, actual vanilla. Straight up vanilla pod and coffee beans in there for like three days. Strained it out and um, put it in a bottle. <laughs> Pieces of vanilla and coffee beans uh, just sitting in the spirit. So like an infusion. Yeah. Oh, cool. Exactly. So the first infusion. one is just straight up Jesse's sour mash. Yeah. Simple sour mash. Mm -hmm. Uncle Jesse. Uh, so I, I was worried that they weren't going to get this. Uncle Jesse is not me. That's someone totally different. This is not my recipe, just in case. Um, I didn't want to not name it on the list because I wanted to give, you know, Uncle Jesse's recipe the props it deserved. Um, but I was worried that they were going to think that was me. A different one, evidently. Uh, this is oh, sugar okay, shine yes, with yeah. corn for flavor for the taste. So it's a sugar wash. This one? No, the first, this all of these three okay. are sugar wash, but with corn added for flavor purposes. Right. That's what it tastes like coming off the still. This one is a blend of the first five generations, actually six, six different aging jars in there, okay. mixed together. Right. It's three to six months old, depending on the jar he pulled. Right. It's 46%. Uh, three. Doesn't taste 46. Three. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, it's Maker's Mark. Pickles. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, four. Hold on. Did I? I said like a twenty to thirty dollar bourbon. Yeah. 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 Okay. You, you can have that one, Rex. <laughs> you did. You called it, man. About right. On well, but now it's classic. More expensive, but is it more expensive? Yeah. Now? It's thirty to fifty. No. Uh, yeah, depending on the what? store. All right. Or a whole um, lot more if you're in classic. New Zealand. <laughs> so he decided to see if he could force complexity by adding things to it to sure. pretend like it's complex. Sure. And you did totally alter the flavor. It's just dessert now. But it is dessert. So you really want to. Too much You're really gonna want that just overwhelmingly sweet. Um, Werther's original caramel vanilla. Yeah. Uh, too much vanilla. Something that's going to be like you know just classic whiskey flavors mm -hmm. necessarily. But there's a dude. There's a tremendous. Okay. Market for that TX blended is. Here's what we're doing. For so, the, by for the, the way, Psalms, you nailed the fourth one. I nailed the third one. Twenty to thirty. One, the <laughs> price I was the one who said that about the the third one. I said this is a totally different thing. I said classic bourbon, twenty to thirty dollars. Let that you were wrong about that. 
So I'm really interested as to why they're saving this, putting it back in the bottle. Hmm. <laughs> Not sure what they're doing there. That could be interesting. No, let the crowd, let the crowd decide. <laughs> I'll give you points each, guys. Uh, but um, Rex, yeah, Daniel, I think Daniel kind of... We'll say on, a, on, on, on TKO, you lost, buddy. <laughs> Let the tribe <laughs> vote on who was right on which one of these. Because right. democracy never, never has Go gone sideways. wrong. Right. I'm gonna keep those, Jesse. And so what I'm gonna do is, so we got. I'm gonna keep those around for the song classes. Now oh. we're onto the S grouping. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Steve. Yeah, it really is like sweetness with wet. Uh oh. <laughs> wet dog. That sounds like tails, man. Is that what he's after? That is weird, man. That's the antique store vibe that we often get. Yeah, I don't know what that dusty. is. That's a dusty, really old things. It's got this sweetness to it that feels almost like a like a sake. Right. A thin sake. I'm still on the nose. But then sake? surrounding Oh, sake. Right. Oh, yeah, all the around that like sweetness okay. is this weird iodiny musty note. On the taste? Dusty the must on taste. On taste. Dusty yeah. must that's weird. I'm not sure what to do with that. Hmm. So I think what they're going for here is uh, uh, which, one? which one? This one? No, wrong glass. <laughs> I think what they're going for here is um, yeah, it's not like uh, old. Um, not the whiskey's old, but there's a, the, a a flavor that reminds them of something that's old in the whiskey, and I do get that. It's almost like the essence of uh, an old lady that smells like mothballs, even though it's not mothballs. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> It's not bad, it's just weird. Okay, yeah, it's not bad. Maybe it's not tails. Mm -hmm. You do not often get those notes together. Yeah. First of all, you rarely get a mustiness. But to have a sweet note in there, like a lighty, lighter, friendlier note, usually when you're getting that musty antique store kind of vibe, it has um, things with more character than just a sweetness. Now, with this, I say like old, dusty antique store flavors. I don't mean that it tastes like it's been aged a really yeah. long time. Yeah, yeah. No, you don't have these rich, dark, mm -mm. heavy... No, it's still quite thin, guys. No, it feels it's thin. It feels it thin. Time. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, just you walk into an antique store and those smells that are in the air... It's almost because... like a brand new store with all the brand new store smells like fresh, just made building, and then they filled it with antique <laughs> Antiques, furniture. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, okay. yeah that I may that. not be a yeah. good uh, touchstone for a lot of people. When I was growing up, my parents, they had a booth in an antique mall. Uh, so I spent like half my summers pissing away my days in an antique. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Is this Rex telling a story instead of Daniel? This is a Rex story. Antique mall. In an antique mall. That's how, I, that's how I got into comic books, actually. Oh, because you can collect the comic books at those what, places. Yeah, well, you know, I'm not sure anymore, <laughs> but there's this one booth in particular. That's a little different. And he had like a stack of old comic books. You know, he did just sit there. He was just like on the bottom shelf in a cabinet somewhere. He's like, you want a comic book? 75 cents. Okay, this is, um, this is interesting. Yeah, number two, what do we got? I don't know. This is, um, it's, uh, smoky. Yeah. It's got the same thinness of mm, this one, but the smoke is rich and dark. So, let me see. Rich and dark. I wonder if he means... Let's have a go. When he says rich and dark for smoke, I wonder if he means rich and dark as in um, he's saying it's really ashy and like um, charcoal -y, I guess? Or whether it's more... Um, the When I say rich and dark, I guess what I tends to mean is sort of like coffee, chocolate, um, the big, thick, chewy, dark flavors. So I wonder if he's sort of heading more towards like barley. I don't know. A blackberry smoke. Blackberry. I'm getting a blackberry and a smoke. Yeah. I kind of oh, like snap. that. For dude, I have. Thank you, Rex. I've never picked up blackberry in that before. In young, and I'm assuming it's young. It's actually kind of nice. Oh, yeah. oh I'll take that. That's enjoyable. But if so, you like smoke. You have to like smoky, weird, dark whiskey. Are you <laughs> yeah, weird and dark? Like, I'll take I'm that. actually having a hard time finding the smoke here. Yeah. What smoke are you talking about? What kind it's, of smoke? Okay, so in my mind, right. there's two kinds of Oh, here we go. Ways okay, this is exactly what I was talking for. Whiskey. Yeah. Take us to school, Daniel. <laughs> smoke. 
and I find that more in Lafroig and Ardbeg. And then there's the wood parts of the smoke okay. smell, mm. right? So ash is what you smell from leftover campfires, yes. right? Or yeah. what your jacket smells like right. after camping. It's the leavings. But the wood <laughs> smoke is what you smell when you're like, oh, someone just lit a fire in their fireplace for the first time this fall. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah, so I'm assuming he means the um, kind of almost more like smoked meat smokiness. Yeah, yeah. It's the it's darker like notes, yeah. and that's what I'm getting. Okay, so I'm he's calling the that the dark smoke. Okay, I mean the cool. darker notes. No, I'm missing that note entirely. Okay. All right. Um, I both of these. Oh, though, whoa! This is back to corn whiskey almost. Both of these, though, as young as they are, here's what's impressed me across the board. <laughs> We used to go into this one. Okay, let's make up, guys. First of all, um, I don't know whether they are just being a little bit kind to me. Maybe they are, um, but this has gone a whole lot better than I thought they than I than I thought it would. I, I was expecting at least some uh, um, reference to the fact that this was a little hard for them to drink. Um, you know, here's the nice stuff in it, but here's the stuff that's um, making it pretty tricky. Uh, they have sort of glossed over that fact a little bit, I think. I think they are being a little bit nice, to be honest. Um, but I'm guessing that they will um, almost uh, quantify that when they get to the end and sum up. Um, yeah, so all in all, uh, I am feeling a lot less... less uh, I, all in all, I'm feeling a lot less like I had to take my medicine today than I thought I would, um, which is good. But um, let's, let's see what Rex has to say on the point. So far, minus the Maker's Mark because you asked. You're welcome, I'm Rex. getting out of these glasses <laughs> doesn't have a lot of the common pitfalls that a lot of super young, you know, people oh. doing stuff in their home. Uh, oh, did you find one? Uh, I was about to say, these no. are all really, uh, uh. not necessarily balanced because I'm getting a lot of dominant notes <clears throat> and with things like infusions, that's what often you're going to get. A I've actually, uh, I've actually lost track of what order these guys are drinking in, so... I'm playing a little bit of catch up here, uh, but I did put one 60% um, barrel aged, uh, barrel proof product on the table there. Uh, maybe that's what he's just found. Let's see. The dominant note, and that's probably what you're going. That one came for me a little bit. I'm just wearing your skin. <laughs> but uh, I'm not getting the sharp, aggressive, spiky, hard to drink elements. Uh, everyone except the one you apparently yeah. just had. So this is a. Okay, so I think what he's referencing here. Let's back up a little bit. When you when you generally make a commercial spirit, um, the, the the stuff that comes off the the still at the beginning uh, is is you know re really full on. It's headsy we call it. And then the commercial guys will, will pick a cut point, and then everything from that cut point down until their tails cut point goes into the final product. The ability that we have as home distillers is to do things um, less you know, in line with making money and being economical at the end of the day. So what I do when I still is take 500 mils jars all the way through the run, lots and lots and lots of jars through the run. Um, and then I can blend those back together based on what I think about every single individual jar. And you'd be amazed at how quickly it changes between jars. So what it does allow me to do is to take a lot of the, um, the aggression out of new make spirit right from the beginning uh, and, you know, sort of take that out of play a little bit. So uh, I'm thinking that's what Rex is going into here. Let's, um, let's see. Look, this just tastes like a corn whiskey. I'm oh, sorry, all the ones that minus maker mark, uh, minus maker's mark, to up to this point before I've had this, have been rounded off and relatively smooth. Do we know the proof on these? No, I mean, I could test them. I don't think, I don't know if he put it in there. Okay. We, we won't know until we read the notes if he put it in the notes. Okay. <clears throat> I think I did put no, it in the notes. That one's around the room a little bit. This third one? Yeah, it's just, just it's it's weird because you think it's just gonna be a sweet corn on candied whiskey. Yeah, on the nose, I'm thinking. And you taste it and there's the something deal? in there that just goes <laughs> and, come, and just kind of crawls out of the glass for you. Maybe it's just soft, Daniel. Yeah, peppery. Yeah, but the pepper is not subtle. It's like it's like the pepper boy went a little long <laughs> on, the, on the pepper turning machine. Pepper boy. It was not the perfect amount of pepper. Is that a? I don't know if that's, that's politically correct. <laughs> the pepper boy. Uh, no, that's for the your, SNL. What's sketches. your career path? Don't you remember pepper boy? Don't you remember <laughs> Chris Farley and Adam Adam Sandler? Sandler, who's like pepper boy? The guy. Goes, <laughs> 
Thank you, Pepper Boy. That is the perfect amount of pepper. I didn't see that one. <laughs> that was good. No. Um, oh, oh, dude, wait, hold wait, on. wait. I'm calling it on, wait, number, wait. on number three. Are you on number four? Hold on. Yeah, hold sorry. On. Give me a moment to live in number three. Okay. On number three, I think he infused a pepper. Because that spice mm -hmm. is no in my mouth right in now. Any of mm -hmm. It's not, oh, I'm not getting beat up like you. No, but, it just it caught me off guard. I was unprepared because I was thinking sweet, sweet, sweet. Yeah. F you pepper. Oh, hey. <laughs> okay, then. That was surprising. That was like a sweet corn. If I go into it expecting the peppery note, I might be okay. Mm. Right? Yeah. Caramel, sweet corn, and then this wrapper of pepper it, spice. It's a lot of pepper spice, though. I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully, he put some pepper in there because we're going on and on about this spicy bit. I really want to look. Can I look? When can I look? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. All right. Dude, I think on four he achieved something magnificent, uh, like for a craft guy, yeah. or he's f***ing with us. <laughs> because this... It's this 50-year-old McCallum. <laughs> this... Mmm, I, I won't tell you yet, but let, 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 let's let this play out. I'm really interested to see what they say about this. Because none of his notes, none of the sweet... Corn sugar type things. Right. This is all rich, round malt mm -hmm. notes. Yeah. Oh, and on the taste, it's flat. That's blended. <laughs> Damn you, Daniel. That's a blend. That's a. I like. I'm gonna go ones. on a limb and say that's a blended scotch because what I always find in blended, he's you're f***ing with us. <laughs> And if I'm wrong, then well done you, because nah, that will right. sell a shit you're ton right. of bottles, whatever it is. Uh, what I find in blends is the nose is always rich, round, and malty. Yeah. And you're like, yay! So this is why I wanted to put a few commercial samples in there. I, um, I wanted to, like I said before, I wanted to validate all of this. I wanted to see what they had to say about it. Um, but um, test them a little bit and just have a little bit of fun. Hey, this is gonna be great, and then you taste it, and it's flat and thin yeah. on budget blends. Okay. So think like the total wine release. I re I'm really digging the nose. Yeah, me too. Yeah. But taste it, and you'll be like, well, that's disappointing. And when that happens to me, I always know, oh, I'm probably doing a budget blend where they went for the nose, and then there's so much mixed into this, it just flattened yeah. out all of the variants. So it's not uh, leaping out of the glass rich sweetness. Yeah, but this is Valentine's, guys. And the, uh, the reason I picked Ballantines is because they've reviewed it before and their review of it was essentially meh, you know, like, and what? It's okay. It's not bad. It's not good. It's just kind of meh. Um, so I thought it would be interesting to throw it back to them and uh, give them another stab at it without them knowing what it is and see if they say something pretty similar to what they said the first time. Well done, guys. And it feels like it's aiming in the direction of a space side. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It's that butterscotchy. It could be a space side, or it could, but no, it's too thin. It's got to be something with grain whiskey in it. So, you see what I mean? Yeah. It just goes, Meh. This could be, well, thin, but also not um, spiky. Not spiky anywhere in the whole round flavor. It off. Every round it off. That's why I said, if you made this, you're going to sell a lot of this. I don't because know. Because that's the kind of thing that non-scotch no, drinkers are like, let yeah. me have a scotch. <laughs> oh. And they're like, oh, I like this. Yeah, whenever their their priorities are make it sweet and tasty and don't hurt me. Yeah. Then that's it. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. Are we ready? Yes. yes. Let's yeah. find out. Okay. Number one. Oh, wait. Let's start with bastard whiskey is what he called this. This is a... Okay, so I called this bastard whiskey before bastard was really a thing on the, uh, on the channel. So I feel like a bit of a douche sending in a whiskey called the bastard whiskey to these guys. Um... But it was called a bastard because I'm assuming these are bastards. Essentially a vertical tasting of the second spirit I ever made. Okay. My first ever whiskey. It affectionately became known as Bastard Whiskey, so I so named it because I screwed up and had to add sugar to boost the original gravity. There's the sweetness. Yeah, so there's sugar in... Well, it's just part of the sugar mash. Yeah. Uh, this is go. from the first bottle, the first one, I ever proofed down and put in a bottle. Three months old. It was a little bland and fiery. Yeah. So I put it... In an unwashed Lafroy bottle. <laughs> really? This one? Yeah. Alright, so it was a bottle, not a not a oaky thing. To me it definitely tastes young, but seems fitting to its backstory. 
and he find the, he found the amount of peat that showed up in an empty glass bottle pretty impressive. I mean, I missed the peat entirely. Did yeah. you get the peat? No. Didn't get the peat. No, I got that there was some weird thing going around it. But, but you didn't. I never identified it as peat. Peat. Yeah. Uh, S2, big bog oak bastard. Bog or Bob. So many bastards. Six months old. Bastard. Oh, by the way, that's three months old. Six months old. Yeah. One of the Stillet crew from Ireland sent me some old peat bog oak all the way to New Zealand. Mm -hmm. uh, when it was six months old, I took a sample and pumped smoke from the bog oak into it. Interesting. Yeah, then aged it for a month with the charred bog oak and finally blended it back into the original Bastard Whiskey. Okay. Um, still oh, Aging Bastard still, is this one. Yeah, the one that we said, man, there's like a peppery a peppery spice in there. I pulled this right out of the aging container and put it in a bottle. The plan was to get to 9 to 12 months, but I tried it and I, I may not make it, basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's starting to get interesting all by itself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No peppers. Just peppery Dude, notes. I'm going back. So this one is 60% ABV. I don't know if I actually told them that. Um, if I didn't, that was a big screw up. But yeah, that's 60% ABV. Uh, 120 proof. That one. I think that's the one you need to follow. This one? Yeah. The four... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The fourth <laughs> one is Valentine's. Valentine's? Yeah. What did we say? Scotch? That's... Yeah. Cheap. We said... Blended scotch. Like I, uh, we called that. Here, look. <laughs> look. Yeah. It's Valentine's. Yeah, yeah. All right. Jesse's trying to trip us up. Freaking still it. <laughs> Not tricking. You almost Not tripping you up. Just still him mine, fun. Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. You, you, <laughs> until we realized it was Valentine's. Uh, of these, I really like the thing that we were swearing there's pepper in here. Yeah, the third because one. Because of the way that it makes your mouth feel like it's springy and there's some, some just some hotness is kind of... A so this, uh, this has carried on aging, um, the one they're talking about right now, and it is at almost a year old. And I'm thinking at a year old I'm going to bottle it because that, um, that peppery spicy note is starting to go off the charts. Uh, so what I might do is um, send these guys back another bottle of this at um, whenever it is that I bottle it and, and see what they think about it at that point in time. Attacking the cells. The third one is not just but, the best of this, but not spiky notes that kind of... Yeah. yeah. I'm hoping that what he's going to say is that the third one is the best of everything I sent him because that is what I feel is the nicest spirit I've made so far. Um, I guess I'm a little bit attached to it because it's um, the oldest sort of aging spirit I've got as well, but yeah, we'll see. Poke the throat. It's the best of all eight, I think. I okay, think so. there well, we go. This one too, the bog thing. Yeah, I like the bog thing. Uh, it's a little overly... Now, here's what would be interesting. Hmm. If you got the age from this one, but right. the richness of this one, yeah. let's find out. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Is it a thing? Dude, try the nose on that first. Mm. Too late. Too late. <laughs> the second one took over, but I'm still getting a little bit of that. Hmm. Well, there was less. Yeah, that nice to give them. Okay, a little bit of the peppery. Yeah, I'd be interested in a blend of those two. But uh, standing alone, I like the peppery one the best. Yeah. So... We did it. Yes, I'm. I'm glad Thank there's. I'm glad there's stuff in there that I liked because I would have felt really bad. You know what? <laughs> <Still> <laughs> just it, I was gonna me. put this back in there, and, and then it. I realized it's just f***ing Valentine's. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel. I would feel really bad if still it was like just a solid member of the community. If I'm giving my opinion, it's like, yeah, dude, don't quit your day job. This yeah. Is, <laughs> it's not your. Okay, so here's the thing, guys. I've got zero interest whatsoever in producing this stuff commercially. That's not my jam. I don't want to do it. Uh, I'm firmly on the hobby side of things. Uh, I do treat still it and consider still it 100% a business. Um, you know that, that that's how I treat the the overall thing. But I don't want to be making spirits full time. Not my jam. Your thing. No, he's doing well. He's doing some really nice stuff in there. And still it's channel. We'll link it in the description below. Mm -hmm. uh, home distilling in New Zealand where it's not illegal. Who'd have thought you could do such a thing in? A Civilized country and the like sky doesn't fall. You like the second one the best? Yeah, apparently the sky uh, doesn't fall. The second and the third. Yeah. You have the second and the third. Right. Here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. <laughs> you fight, may fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. If you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. Cheers, guys. Hey, thanks for hanging thanks. out with us in the whiskey vault. A bunch, guys. Um, you dedicated way more time to that than I thought you were going to. I thought you were going to give me um, two minutes or something on a on a 
donation day or something so uh, I really really appreciate it team anyway this has gone on long enough I've got to get to work and I want to get this video out nice and quick so uh, everyone can see what I thought about the whole process um, but yeah thanks a bunch guys and uh, I'll catch you later on this week I know this week in terms of videos for the regular viewers has been pretty messed up uh, but I will be putting another view I will be putting another video out uh, on Thursday or fr uh, Friday or Thursday depending on where you are uh, regardless, I'll put another little short one out. Alright guys, see ya.